I was cleaning out the quail hutches and I found something that I'm really excited to show you guys. Hey guys, welcome back to another Slightly Rednecked video. Again, my name's Chris. If you're not familiar with this channel, I help you to produce your own meat, eggs, and vegetables from your backyard, your balcony, your deck, your garage, or even a spare room in your house if that's the way you want to do it. And uh, like I said, today I was cleaning out the quail hutch a little bit after work, um, just checking on the birds, seeing how they're doing, and I noticed something moving underneath the cages. Sounds a little ominous, but I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about. I'm super excited about these. These things come every single year, and uh, boy, they are super beneficial to me. Let me bring you in close and show you exactly what I mean. Okay, at first glance, it probably doesn't look like much. Just a uh, manure pile underneath the, uh, the quail hutch. You may notice there's a few flies around, but not very many. And if you look real close, you might be able to start seeing things kind of squirming around in here. If I dig through a little bit from place to place, there they are, right there. These, they're not showing up in the camera very well, probably. They look kind of like little worms, little uh, maggots, so to speak. But these are black soldier fly larvae. These are great to have around. Black soldier flies are not um, a super nuisance like house flies are. Uh, they do just naturally inhabit my quail hutches pretty much every year, right underneath. And they are so nice to have around. One reason, they help keep the fly population down. Like I said, you see a few flies around here, but you won't find any fly maggots in here. Um, you really don't see that many flies because the black soldier flies keep them at bay. They are composting machines too. They take care of this, keep this all uh, manageable all summer long until it freezes. Um, this is, I mean, this is, you can see what they're doing. The top layer is not really that much, but underneath, it's just, it's already compost. I mean, look at that amazing what they can do if uh you know if you have a bird that dies or something like that you throw it underneath here they clean it up in just a matter of a couple of days it doesn't take them long at all to clean that mess up they're just fantastic to have around plus they make a nice little uh snack for your birds let me see if i can harvest a few of these and uh we'll give the birds their first uh black soldier fly larva and see how they react all right so i've harvested a few out of here they're wiggling around a little bit, not super active. It may take a minute to get the bird's attention. They're not gonna know exactly what they are when I first put them in there. Uh, so we're gonna see if they uh, react to them at all. It'll probably take them a minute to quit being freaked out by me being in here. Hey guys. Oh, they're moving around quite a bit now. Let's see. Doesn't take them long to figure that out and start going after them. He gobbled one down and got one down now he's going for another one once they figure out what they are they'll uh, they go crazy over them all right so not too exciting today uh, we introduce a new food to your birds a lot of times they're just a little bit hesitant about it you may wonder why I put them in the sandbox over here instead of like in a dish or something like that over here well, the main reason is because quail are just messy eaters. They play with their food. You can see them kind of pecking at those things and throwing them around a little bit. And if I put them in anything over here, they're gonna throw them, they're gonna fall right through the, the wire and they're gonna be gone. And the sandbox gives them a little bit of grit whenever they eat those things. So that's good for them whenever they're eating insects and things like that. They'll figure out what those things are once they get used to eating them or once they know what they are, when you start bringing them into them, boy, they're gonna flock to them. They're gonna go crazy over them. It just takes them a little bit of time to get used to a new food. But that's not the only reason, again, that I'm excited about having those. It's, you know, honestly, I don't harvest them that often for the birds because it's kind of a messy job. It's unpleasant to do, you know, that kind of thing. But they are fantastic to have underneath the quail coop because, again, they just do a great job of composting the quail maneuver, uh, keeping it all under control. They keep the fly population down. I have lots of people ask me about how do you control flies. 
I don't have a huge problem with them because of the black soldier fly larva. And uh, they also, like I said, are great decomposers of animal uh, waste. So if I have a bird that dies or something like that, toss it down there and they will, they will chew through that thing within, in a matter of days, it's pretty much gone. So I don't have to worry about disposing of that or uh, you know, finding a way to take care of that. Um, I just let the black soldier flies do that for me. Um, again, they're not a pest, they're not a nuisance, they don't, they don't hover around, like you don't ever hardly ever see the flies themselves, just the larva. Um, they come naturally to my coops, but a couple of things you can do to attract them, they do like the manure piles, especially if there's a little bit of quail food sprinkled in there and it's a little bit on the damp side. So if you've got a little bit of a, like we've had some pretty heavy rain, and that keeps us kind of a little bit damp, that helps draw them in as well. Um, you know, there are plenty of people you can look online, plenty of people that build um, cages for them. Like I said, they can be self-harvesting. If you build the right kind of ramp system, whenever they get ready to, you know, that's the larval stage. So when they get ready to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? To change into the fly. I can't remember the name of that word for some reason. They will crawl up that ramp to get away from all the rest of them. And if you hang like a little bucket or something outside, they'll crawl up the ramp out the hole into the bucket. And they're self-harvesting in that sense. So anyway, just wanted to bring you guys along on a little video, show you something I was excited about. This is one of my favorite things to see is the black soldier flies under the cages. I know that I'm not going to have to deal with flies much longer. I know I'm not going to have to worry about scooping out the manure. They're going to take care of it. Um, it. It's just really a truly a blessing that I don't have to worry about any of those kinds of things. It makes it manageable, especially living in town where you know things like this could easily become a nuisance to the neighbors. So. You might hear the uh, quail starting to crow in the background. They're, they're a little young. They're only six weeks old they, or so. They haven't really uh, started laying yet, but we're gonna come back and do a video on those soon to show you the difference between the meat makers and the pharaohs. Not a huge difference between them yet, but I think we'll notice something as they get, uh, you know, hit that full eight week, full grown kind of stage, start laying eggs. We'll come back and we'll do some videos on that stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. As always, God bless.